Hello everyone, I'm Celeste. Welcome to my booktube channel, A Reader's Almanac, and today I'm going to be starting a new mini-series on my channel that I'm super excited about. It's now September. Um, it isn't particularly cold yet, but it will be soon, and the first day of autumn is going to be upon us soon. The nights will be getting colder and longer, um, the leaves will be turning color, and um, the trees will start to get barren, and I just love the crispness in the air and the apple cider and all of that. And children will also, of course, be going back to school. So I thought it would be a perfect time to investigate um, the premise of the boarding school book. One of my favorite tropes always has been the premise of a child being sent away to live elsewhere. And um, in future videos, we'll be discussing the darker, more suspenseful, gothic manifestation of that in novels. But for today, I thought I would just start out here in part one with what I like to call the happy, non-suspenseful boarding school book. Now, when I was a little girl, I never went away to boarding school, but I did attend two pretty unique um, private schools. In kindergarten, I went to a place called the Academy of the Sacred Heart. It was a big, very old group of buildings on a beautiful property in the heart of the city. And um, I remember that our kindergarten classroom was in a house with a winding staircase. Um, and in those days, you were allowed to slide down the wooden banister. They wouldn't let you do that today, I'm sure. But we used to be able to slide down from the second floor to the first floor on a wooden banister. I also remember that out in the back field in the winter time, um, there was a big toboggan run, which is kind of like a slide but toboggans go down it like a big chute. And um, the nuns wore habits back in the, those days still. And so it was really fun because I remember going up the toboggan chute with the nuns and then whizzing down on the toboggans and the nuns would be laughing hysterically and their habits, their black habits would be blowing wildly in the December wind behind them. So that's a really fond memory. I also remember that we had to go to chapel and when we went into the chapel, we had to wear these little white lacy gloves with buttons on the side. So that was one memory of a private school. And then the other one uh, was in grade school. And in grade school, I transferred to a private girls school called the Columbia School. It was also a very special and unique place. In fact, I visited it last year when I did a video here on my channel on the old vintage Scholastic Book Club. Um, and the grounds were very special at my old school. I was able to go back into my old art room, which had tile floors and sculptural ceilings and giant picture windows. And in one of our classroom areas, there was a gorgeous fireplace with um, built-in seats next to it, and like a little nook. Uh, next to the fireplace and um, just sort of this mural painted above it, which was like something out of a house that William Morris designed. So um, my point is, although I didn't attend boarding school, I do know what it's like to attend a school where there is unique architecture and passageways and paintings and uh, probably secrets. And all of the children wore uniforms and we used to pass secret notes notes and we had secret clubs and all of that. Okay, so what do I mean by the happy, non-suspenseful boarding school book? Um, what I mean is that children go away to a school, uh, but the tone is not like a mystery. The stories are more about everyday life and lessons learned, and while some suspenseful action may happen, the stories are more about growing up, about developing relationships and getting along, and having some adventures while coming of age along the way. So there are numerous examples of the generally happy, non-suspenseful boarding school book throughout publishing history. I'm going to share a few examples with you here. Alice B. Emerson, which is actually a 
a pseudonym, but she wrote several series of books for girls. One is um, the Betty Gordon books, and there is this beautiful copy that I own called Betty Gordon at Boarding School. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous cover. And here's the back of it. And um, the Betty Gordon books, okay. Betty Gordon is an orphan and she becomes the ward of her uncle. Um, and he is sort of a miserable old miser. She is not at all happy living with him in a place called Bramble Farm, but she does eventually get to go away to boarding school and makes a number of friends there. She's sometimes been compared to Nancy Drew uh, and her friends Bess and George. Um, but in any event, Betty's a very outspoken girl, and um, I do know that she gets angry very easily, which is kind of funny. Um, and she's also been compared to Trixie Belden, and she loves to be a member of clubs and societies, just like Trixie Belden had her group, the Bob Whites. Um, so this would be an example of an American boarding school book, which is generally happy and more about making friends and having adventures and so forth. The next book I'd like to chat with you about is Daddy Long Legs by Jean Webster. This is a book that is epistolary, meaning it's written in the form of letters. And um, it was first published in 1925. And um, this is about a teenager named Judy. Judy has grown up in the John Greer School for Orphans, and she's now 17 years old. There is a wealthy unknown benefit factor on the board of directors that comes to visit the orphanage and he takes notice of Judy um, and he decides that he would like to sponsor her because she shows a great deal of promise in terms of um, wanting to go on to college and how much she helps at the orphanage and so forth. So he decides to um, uh, be an unknown benefactor and pay for her college education. And uh, as a sort of thank you, she writes to him on a regular basis. And she calls him Daddy Longlegs because she never quite caught a glimpse of his face, but when he was leaving uh, the building one day in the orphanage, um, the sun uh, was shining at an angle through the door and his shadow was cast across the entranceway floor and it looked like he had super long legs so ever since then she had called him daddy long legs and um, so yeah um, it's a beautiful story it's really fun to read I got this vintage copy one year for my birthday I did discuss it in another video so be sure to check that out this would be another example of an uh, an upbeat light-hearted um, boarding school trope novel of course another upbeat story about a child sent to a boarding school is the Madeline books by Ludwig Bemelmans. And this was first published in 1939. The stories all take place in a Catholic boarding school in Paris. The teacher named Miss Clavel is strict, but she loves the children. And the stories typically start out in an old house in Paris that was covered in vines, lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. And um, the stories are sometimes completely lit written in rhymes. Um, it's just, you know, they're lovely. And of course, there's the Madeline dolls and the Madeline dollhouse and so forth. And lovely, lovely uh, illustrations. I'll just show you one here. That's in Paris, of course, with the Eiffel Tower. And uh, here are the little girls in their dorm room. So a charming story set in a boarding school, and that is Madeline. So another book I'd like to discuss with you, which is generally upbeat and happy and delightful, but also takes place 
in a school is The Trouble with Angels or Life with Mother Superior. And this is by the author Jane Trahi. Um, it was first published in 1962 and it was based on the author's own experiences growing up in a Catholic school. Um, the story is primarily a comedy and it takes place at St. Francis's Academy, which is an all girls boarding school in Pennsylvania, operated by an order of nuns. And there is a student named Mary Clancy who is always getting into all kinds of trouble. Um, and she gets into this trouble with her best friend, Rachel. Um, they pull all sorts of pranks on the nuns, which are hilarious. And um, at one point, they're actually almost expelled and it becomes not funny. Mary Clancy, I would say that she sort of resents Mother Superior's rules and regulations and authority, and she can't understand why anyone in the world would ever want to be a nun or live that lifestyle. Um, but sh slowly she sort of turns her philosophy, her way of thinking around. It's just delightful, and it was actually turned into a very well-known movie starring Haley Mills, and I remember this clearly from my childhood. There were actually two movies. The first was The Trouble with Angels, and then the second one was Where Angels Go, Trouble Follows. And um, it's funny, tender, inspiring, and it has a very touching and surprising ending. The next book I'd like to chat with you about is The Secret Language by Ursula Nordstrom. This book is so near and dear to my heart. This is one of those vintage scholastic books from the Scholastic Book Club. And oh, this book was so popular when we were little girls. Um, this is about a little girl named Victoria North and she attends the Coburn Homeschool and that's a boarding school. Um, the house mother at the Co Coburn School is very, very strict and Victoria is feeling super, super homesick and the other girls don't seem to have time for her and she's crying and they're kind of mocking her and making fun of her because she's crying and she doesn't feel like she fits in. But then she meets another little girl named Martha Sherman and um, everything changes. Martha introduces her to all kinds of fun. They get into all kinds of scrapes together and um, they have initiation ceremonies and do things after lights out, um, like have midnight feasts and things like that. And Martha also introduces Vicky to her very own special secret language that only the two of them share. And so they'll sort of talk in the secret language or secret code when they're around other people. It's just such a special, special little tiny scholastic book and um, there's a lot in here that I have not gone into um, that you'll enjoy if you get the story. And by the way, Ur Ursula Nordstrom is a, um, a very well-known children's book publisher and The Secret Language was her only attempt at writing a children's book of her own, but what a special book she wrote. Um, but she, if you look her up, um, Ursula Nordstrom is known for publishing a lot of very well-known children's authors um, uh, at, when she was a, a book editor. So look her up. I think you'll be surprised at the number of authors she published. Well, that's all I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments below what are some of the happy boarding school books or boarding school series that I've missed. Let me know. Um, in future installments, as I said, I will be exploring some other books with other elements and manifestations of the child being sent away to some sort of institution. Um, and those will be progressively darker, more suspenseful. I think it's perfect as we head toward October and Victober. So look forward for those. Stay tuned for those. Um, I hope you are enjoying your weekend and have a great week. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.